For this topic, let's look at a little bit of adventure. Suppose there is a bank which is situated along a circular road uh, with a circumference of 2200 kilometers. A group of thieves enter the bank and after a robbery, they start fleeing in their jeep at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. Now these thieves are moving in their jeep along the circular road, along the circumference of the circular road. The police is informed about this robbery and the police start chasing the thieves after 4 hours and instead of moving along the circumference of the road, they start moving along the diameter of this circular road. The intention of the police is to catch the thieves at a point which is diametrically opposite to the bank while the thieves are running along this circumference. So the question here is, at what speed should the police move so as to catch these thieves at this point diametrically opposite the bank? To understand this, we need to go through our very basic concepts of time, speed and distance. And once we've done that, let's come back and look at the solution to this problem. What is speed? If we try to understand the meaning of speed in terms of a definition, then the definition of speed would be speed is the distance traveled in unit time. If we now try to convert this or express this in terms of a formula, we would say speed is equal to distance upon time. And if we relate it back to the definition, it is the distance traveled in unit time. Whenever we talk of speed, the most commonly used units for speed would be kilometers per hour or meters per second. So speed is normally expressed in terms of kilometers per hour or meters per second. Now if we just play around with this formula, we have already said speed is distance upon time. By cross multiplication we can say distance is equal to speed into time and similarly we can also say time is equal to distance upon speed. Now most of the problems in this topic of speed time distance, we will need to use one of these three formulae. Depending on the data given and depending and hence depending on what is asked, we will use one of these three formulae. If we focus on this particular statement which is distance is equal to speed into time, we can say that if time remains constant, then distance varies directly as speed. This is if time is constant. What does this mean? In the same time, if I travel at a higher speed, I will be able to cover more distance and hence distance varies directly as speed if time is constant. On the other hand, if I keep speed as constant, then distance will vary directly as time if speed is constant, which means if I travel at the same speed and if I travel for more time, then I will cover more distance. However, if I now relate these two, then we would get speed varies inversely as time if distance is constant. Now, what would this mean? To cover the same distance, if I travel at a higher speed, then I would take lesser time and hence Speed varies inversely as time if the distance is constant. Now this has a lot of very important application when it comes to problems. So in a problem if you are told that distance to be covered remains the same but the speed doubles. Now automatically if the speed doubles the time required would become half of the original time. So we can also say if speed changes in the ratio A is to B and if distance remains constant, then time should change in the ratio B is to A. So basically, because they are inversely related, we just take the reciprocal of the ratio, obviously assuming distance is constant. Having gone through these basic concepts, in a lot of problems, we have already mentioned that speed is measured either in kilometers per hour or meters per second. But in a lot of problems, we will have distance given in terms of, let's say, meters and speed given in terms of, let's say, kilometers per hour. So what is important is we need to learn if speed is given in kilometers per hour, but 
distance is given in meters then we may have to convert speed from kilometers per hour into meters per second and hence how do we convert so to understand the conversion if we want to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second we are actually converting kilometers to meters in the numerator and we are converting hours to seconds in the denominator and hence actually we would multiply by 1000 in the numerator and by 3600 in the denominator which would mean you are actually multiplying by 5 upon 18. So if speed is given in kilometers per hour and if we want to convert it to meters per second then whatever is the numerical value of kilometers per hour we just need to multiply that by 5 upon 18 and we would get the speed in meters per second. So as an example, if speed is given as 54 kilometers per hour, then 54 multiplied by 5 by 18 will make it 15 meters per second. If I want to convert from meters per second to kilometers per hour, then I'll just multiply by the reciprocal of this, which would be 18 by 5. One other aspect is there are times when instead of kilometers per hour you have miles per hour so we also need to convert convert miles to kilometers and here the conversion from miles to kilometers would simply be one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers so if you want to convert from miles per hour into kilometers per hour then whatever is the speed given in miles per hour we multiply that by 1.6 and we would get the speed in kilometers per hour so these are the basic concepts of speed time distance in terms of the formulae in terms of the relationship in terms of variation and in terms of conversion of speed from one unit to another unit in the basic concept of speed time distance we've already seen that if distance remains the same then speed and time are inversely related Let's look at a slightly different concept here. Suppose we have these two endpoints A and B. And suppose we have two people starting from these two endpoints. There's a person starting from A moving towards B. And there's a person starting from B moving towards A. Suppose this person is traveling at a speed which is denoted as SA. And this person is traveling at a speed which is denoted at SB. Now the problem tells you if two people start from two opposite ends A and B and move towards each other and after meeting they reach the opposite ends in times A hours and B hours respectively then what would be the relationship between the speed and the time. Suppose we have to solve a question of this type. Please note the time given out here as A and B is the time after meeting. So let's take this as a point where they meet. Let's denote this as point A and sub M. I'm sorry, let's denote this as point M. And suppose we say that these two people meet at this point after time T. Let's try and understand what happens here. This person who is starting from point A is traveling at a speed SA and he reaches point M in time T. So the distance that this person travels is SA multiplied by T speed into time. This person who is traveling at a speed SB reaches point M after time T and hence this distance traveled would be SB into T. Now it is also given to us in the problem that this person who is traveling towards B after point M reaches the opposite end in A hours and this person who is traveling from B to A after point M reaches point A in B hours. Which basically means that this person who is moving towards B is going to travel distance SB into T in A hours at a speed of SA. So we use the formula speed is equal to distance upon time. 
So S A would be equal to S B into T upon A when we look at this part. Similarly, we will get S B is equal to and this portion is going to travel distance S A T in B R's and hence S B is equal to S A into T divided by B. Now if we divide these two equations, T would cancel off. And then what we would get when we divide these two equations, we would get S A upon S B is equal to S B into B upon S A into A. And if we cross multiply now, we would get S A square divided by S B square is equal to B upon A. And hence the final answer that we would get would be S A upon S B is equal to square root of B upon A. So in such a problem where the data given to us is about time taken to reach the opposite end but that time taken is after the meeting point then the relationship that we would have would be ratio of the speeds would be square root of the inverse ratio of the time. The concept of relative speed is applicable when we have two moving objects. So when we say relative speed what it means is the speed of one object in relation to the other object. Let's assume these are two objects. One of them let's assume for the time being is stationary and this is the moving object. Now if this object is moving towards this object or away from this object since this object is stationary the relative speed would be nothing but the speed of this object itself. Now let's take a case where these two objects are both moving and this object is moving in this direction and this object is also moving in this direction so we are looking at a case where two objects are moving in the same direction. If we want to find the relative speed of this moving object with respect to this moving object when they are moving in the same direction how do we work it out. Now if this object was not moving then the relative speed of this object would simply be speed of this moving object itself but now by moving this object by moving in this direction is making it more difficult for this object to catch up. When I say more difficult it means that this object is going to take more time to catch up with this object because this object is also moving away and if it is going to take more time that means the relative speed of this object with respect to this object is going down only then will the time taken be more and hence when two objects move in the same direction the relative speed would be the difference of the two individual speeds. So if we have two objects moving at speeds A and B and if they are moving in the same direction then the relative speed would be the difference of the two speeds. Let's denote it as mod of A minus B because it would depend whether A is greater or B but the relative speed is the difference of the two speeds. However, if they are moving in opposite direction, if we again go back to these two as the moving objects, by moving in opposite directions towards each other, each object is making it easier for the other object to meet up, which would mean time required to meet up would go down, which means the speed has gone up and hence the relative speed now when two objects move in opposite directions would be the sum of the two speeds. So to summarize, whenever we have two objects both moving, suppose at speeds A and B individually, if they are moving in the same direction, relative speed would be the difference of the two speeds and if they are moving in opposite directions, then the relative speed would be the sum of the two speeds.